Well, hello there. Welcome to Exam AZ-900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 43, entitled Azure Dev Test Labs. My name is Tim Warner. Today's skill from the Azure Fundamentals AZ-900 objective domain begins with the functional group Describe Core Azure Services, passes through the objective, describe some of the solutions available on Azure, and our specific skill is entitled Describe DevOps Solutions Available, such as Azure Dev Test Labs. You know the drill if you've been with me before in other lessons. You can go to timw.info forward slash az900sg for an interactive table of contents. Let's get into it. What is Azure Dev Test Labs? What value can it bring your organization? Well, here's the deal. Microsoft itself defines Azure Dev Test Labs this way, that the product enables developers on teams to efficiently self-manage VMs and platform as a service resources without waiting for approvals. So long story short, the value that Azure Dev Test Labs brings to your organization is that it saves your business both time and money because it's a platform, essentially a platform service in itself, that consists of various reusable artifacts, virtual machine images, web apps, databases, and even artifacts like software, like Git, Source Control, Visual Studio. You can set up these virtual machines or these web apps or whatever artifacts you want in such a way to support self service, where again, a developer may need to get into a machine to do some development or testing, and they don't want to have to go through your service desk necessarily and go through an approval process. They can come into Dev Test Labs, claim a virtual machine, use it, and then unclaim the VM for someone else to use. There's other ways to use Azure Dev Test Labs, actually. At the end of this video, I'll give you links to the documentation as I normally do. This slide and the next slide show reference architectures, just some ideas on how to use and deploy and maintain Dev Test Labs. This one deals with infrastructure as a service. And you don't have to build your labs based on an Azure DevOps continuous integration, continuous delivery pipeline set, but that's what's happening in this particular technology. Rather Rather than focus on the top part of the drawing, look at the bottom, where their development and QA and production environments mirror each other, but notice that the development and QA environments are using dev test labs. How is this helpful? Well, number one, your business doesn't have to pay for the VMs to be online all the time, consuming billing minutes. As a Dev Test Labs administrator, actually, you can schedule virtual machines to auto start and auto stop. You can put quotas on the number of virtual machines or other artifacts that your developers can claim. And you see application insights running in all three environments. That's going to allow you to gather telemetry, metrics, and monitoring data for all of your lab artifacts. As I said, these artifacts can go beyond virtual machines if you've already gone into PaaS and using platform as a service hosted products for your applications. Notice here we have a similar workflow, development, QA, and production environments with, again, two of the three happening in the context of a dev test lab. And in this case, the developers are interacting with Azure App Service, Azure Redis Cache, and a couple types of SQL databases, the same way that they would with virtual machines. But once again, when the developers don't need the environment anymore, it goes away, which can save your business a lot of money, as opposed to keeping these environments up 24-7, 365. All right, Arino, let's get this party started. In this demonstration, I'm going to give you the high-level basics of using Azure Dev Test Labs. I'm signed in here with my Tim account, which is a subscription owner. What I'll do first is open the global navigation box, and let's go to Dev Test Labs. Now, the idea here is that you can create multiple labs that support different environments. In fact, in the lecture portion a couple minutes ago, I showed you a couple reference architectures from Microsoft, one using IaaS and another using PaaS, where a business divided their tiers, that is their development and QA environments as separate labs. And then of course they had their production services running in a dedicated resource group. I've already gone ahead and created a lab here called AZ900 Lab. Let's duck in and take a look around. First thing I want to draw your attention to is under my lab, 
you can claim virtual machines that the dev test lab administrator has set up. When you create a dev test lab, you'll also get an Azure Key Vault, which serves as a great place to store secrets, not only for virtual machines, but for database connection strings, web application passwords, and I've actually created a secret called VM Password that I used to attach to a claimable virtual machine I built. Some other things, just pointing it out, is that you've got this concept of the formula or reusable base. This is a library of services. In this case, I've created one formula called Visual Studio Dev, and I can just tell you what that is. It's a Windows 10 virtual machine that already has all of the Visual Studio build tools and integrated development environment, or IDE, pre-installed. So anytime a developer needs an environment, they can simply claim an available, claimable virtual machine based on that image. If you go to add, you can get a huge list, as you'll see it populate, of different first and third party images. You can, of course, customize these or upload your own custom images. Notice that we have a lot of Microsoft images, but it starts right off with Canonical Ubuntu if you're using Linux or need to use Linux. We've got CentOS and SUSE, Oracle database. So the idea here is that you can build your own custom formula using one of these as a base. And ultimately, you create a library of these different claimable virtual machines or app services, for instance. The way that the access control and your policy work happens is from within dev test labs. Now, if you've been following my lessons sequentially, you're probably thinking, where's the role-based access control? Where are the taxonomic tags? And where is Azure policy? It's a little bit different. I'll show you what I mean. In the settings of your dev test lab, you go down to settings, configuration, and policies. And this is where you can set for instance, your allowed virtual machine sizes, how many virtual machines can a user claim at once, how many VMs are you allowing in the lab running simultaneously, a lot of support and policy oriented options here but they've been abstracted. That is the underlying tools like Azure Policy have been abstracted and instead you're using the control plane here in Dev Test Labs directly. I had mentioned the schedules option where you can have your virtual machines auto shut down as well as auto start to save your business money. You can make get repositories available to your developers such that when they claim a virtual machine and sign into it, that Git repo from wherever will be cloned automatically to their system. Again, you've got this concept of artifacts and mandatory artifacts would be ones that you always want to have included on any claimable virtual machines. Separate set for Windows and Linux, just to show you what the artifacts list looks like. Got Fiddler and 7-Zip and a whole bunch of useful development tools. That's the idea here. The Docker server, Git, Firefox browser, whatever the case is there with your environment. If we go to formulas, this is just, again, another view into our formula list. And then, of course, there's monitoring and cost tracking, as you see. And ultimately, we do have resource locks, we do have taxonomic tags, and we do have access control IAM. And I do want to dip in there for a second because we're going to add a user to this lab right now. Let me go to Add, Add Role Assignment, and I'll open the Role dropdown and let me filter for Dev Test. There's a built-in role called Dev Test Labs User, and as the tooltip says, it lets you connect, start, restart, and shut down your VMs in your Azure Dev Test Labs. I'm going to choose my Melissa user, which is a lab user that I've used a lot in these training videos. I'll save that change. And now Melissa is not going to have administrative privilege within the lab, but she certainly will be able to claim a virtual machine for her work. So let's step back out to the lab level. And if we go to claimable virtual machines, I've got one that I'm going to need to troubleshoot. My Visual Studio VM is in a failed status. That's fine. I can investigate that. And I've also deployed one that is available for claiming. It's called the Data Science Virtual Machine. It's a really interesting Azure Marketplace image. It's a Windows Server VM, but it has all the data science tools and machine learning tools built into it already. So it's very handy for your data scientists who need an environment really quickly. Maybe they're not in their home office and on their home computer. Now let me finish this demo by opening a new in private window and let's pretend that where Melissa will sign into the Azure portal using her Azure Active Directory sign in name and password of course. Yeah, she'll stay signed in, sure. Okay, and we will search for dev test to go to dev test labs. 
We'll go into her lab, claimable virtual machines, and we'll right click to claim that machine. And we can see that process and the notification happening in the upper right. Once the claim operation happens, notice that Azure has removed it from the list of claimable virtual machines. Melissa now can go to the My Virtual Machines blade and we can click the Data Science VM and use just our traditional method for connecting, in this case, a Windows Server virtual machine. Of course, it's gonna be a remote desktop protocol file. So we'll pop this guy open. We'll accept the connection, of course, and the certificate from the virtual machine. We'll provide her credentials. Again, accept the public key and certificate from the VM. And before you know it, we have a running virtual machine and the value proposition here again is the fact that it's set up exactly the way our data scientist user, Melissa, needs. If she needs Power BI, it's here. If she needs a Jupyter Notebook, all preloaded here. So wherever Melissa is in the world, as long as she can establish this RDP session from over the internet, she can be productive. And when she's finished using the virtual machine, she'll close the session like she normally would or any user would. To unclaim, she can come back to the My Virtual Machines blade in the Azure portal, open up the ellipsis next to the machine that she was on, and she will choose unclaim to return the virtual machine back to the claimable virtual machines pool. Learning resources. Number one, about Dev Test Labs. This is required reading, it seems to me. Go to timw.info forward slash DTL1. If you're looking for a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to set up Dev Test Labs in the classroom mode, go to timw.info forward slash DTL2. Actually, that really bears repeating. You may not be a trainer yourself, but your department, you may have a training department in your organization, and they're wondering how they can leverage Azure in the classroom. Because you have such wide-ranging control over the environments and your budgets and your access in Dev Test Labs, it provides a great platform for a classroom environment. Lastly, if you're a DevOps specialist, you may want to know that the Dev Test Labs team at Microsoft has published a whole bunch of Azure Resource Manager templates that make it easier to spin up labs. In other words, you run a template that creates the entire lab, including all artifacts and access. You can get to that GitHub repository by browsing to timw.info forward slash DTL3. Awesome sauce. Well, another lesson down. Our next lesson is on Azure management groups. In the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim, view my Pluralsight courses at timw.info forward slash PS, or visit my website, techtrainertim.com. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next lesson.